So we can get the introductions out of the way. You're all aware of one and it's familiar, right? Yes. Now are you familiar with each other? So you betcha. <laughs> So, we could get started just to knock uh, a few things out of the way. I talked to Pat a little bit on the phone before she came uh, Set the ground rules for the negotiations, if that's what you'd like to go ahead and tackle, because that's usually the first thing we do that we get moving along here. Um, what kind of ground rules would you guys like to see established for negotiations? Uh, I but I'm going to um, present our proposals, and then if need be for you guys to caucus, we can caucus at any time to be able to discuss the options presented on either side. Um, so kind, generous, loving. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, and, and to let you know, Dave is going to come. He's just had a meeting right now. And we just have him here on our side to help us understand stuff that maybe we present because sometimes he just has more insights than we do. So he's probably going to come late, but he will be here at some point unless we're done within five minutes and that he will not be here. Well, one of the other ground rules I'd like to kind of put out there if you guys are in agreement with this is no new proposals after the third meeting. Oh, okay. So that it you know, keeps our business flowing along. Um, there could be the tendency for um, stuff to come up and then the other side, whether it's us or you, go back and say, well, they brought that up. we got to go right. find something to bring up and then get into this um, you know, pile on of stuff. So we've got our issues that we know are important to us. You know, by the third meeting, we should all be on the table by then. And we should be able to move forward. Is that okay? Okay.
under CRE 8.1, we are just would like to revert back to the old language of the higher date is being defined as the first work day in said position. Um, contingent upon board approval, we just decided it was too wordy, not necessary to have in there because you guys have to approve it. It's just not not necessary wordy. Reduction in force, what we discovered when we went through the RIF a couple, about three years ago, whenever it all happened. Um, was then we did recall one of the employees that had been ripped and so she had to start out with zero sick leave hours and so what we would like to see happen is um, they have one year time frame to be recalled and so we'd like them to be able to have the option of retaining all of their sick leave hours in case they are recalled then they can come back with all of those sick leave hours and if at the end of that year they're not recalled then they would get their lump sum payment at one fourth of their hours. Um, so this just benefits that employee that was then rift and then recalled. They still have because they could still at the time of the rift, if they chose to take that sick leave hour payment, then they could. But this just gives them that option for up to that one year time frame to be to have all of their hours that they previously had. So they aren't really losing any of this they chose. Let me keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, 8.3 under recall. We just wanted to clarify that if a RIFT employee is recalled, they would come back at their previous wage, or if it was a contractor and we had negotiated a wage increase, that they would get that wage increase. Because they were RIFT, we don't want them to be punished if they're recalled and have to start over at the entry level wage. We, we just want to clarify that they would be able to um, get there wage that they left with with any wage increase and if they were recalled into a different category if that category wage was higher than what they were making when they left then they would get that category increase or base rate whatever it would be and then of course they would, um, if they had opted to do so they could keep those sick leave those accumulated sick leave hours in section 8.2 reduction of course um, under the the recall, the, the struck out part, after we had made our contract, we discovered this language was not acceptable. And John called it, pointed out that we couldn't have that language in there. It was contradictory to some other language in the sick leave. And it was basically a big so We're just striking it and removing it. Um, under fringe benefits, um, that did say 10.1 originally. We would like it to say 10.0. And then because of the new Obama or whatever health care act, um, we would like the district to make, instead of just leaving the district right health insurance and the flexible benefit account also to state that we also have the option of having the health savings account. Just those three options available to us. Um, and then if you look further down, we have 10.1, which is similar language to what the teacher contract says about the definition of health insurance for um, district 10.2 is the same as our flexible account was before and on the back page the health savings account states that um, we as employees can have a health savings account even if we are covered under the high deductible health plan under a, a different of under a, as a secondary that we'd still be able to have the option of a health savings account Holidays and leave. Um, we just would like to get a few more leave, eight leave days. And um, because Montana Code annotated states that there are 11 paid holidays um, in the state of Montana, we only get paid for seven of those. The other four we generally are working. And so we can't actually call them holidays, but we would like to have paid, paid leave days. Um, so we were looking at having New Year's Eve day, since we never work that, Friday after Thanksgiving because we don't work, Christmas Eve day because we don't work, and then a discretionary day that we would use um, throughout the year if something happened or if we just chose to have a day off or something, we would have that discretionary day as a paid leave day. And 
and then under the duration of the agreement, we're looking at hopefully having a two-year contract so that we're not negotiating the same year as the teachers, which I know they had for three years, so um, try and get us offset again. We've been trying to do that, but then last year when the teachers just did it on their contract, we kind of got stuck in negotiating again with the teachers. So it just makes it a little more convenient for you and us. There's not as much pressure on everybody to negotiate the same year. Um, under compensation, we kind of ran into this this year when we had a, a, a new person hired, a couple new people hired. Um, there was just confusion on when they get paid the entry level wage, and so we're hoping to clear that up. And if we can, if somebody has been working as a sub in a position, district office calls them and says, this position is being opened, we want you to apply, or they do apply, whatever, and they get accepted. We want them to be able to start getting their entry-level wage the day that they that they have been offered the position, the day they accept the position, and then the day that they start in that position working. Like if on Friday, the superintendent calls and says, hey, everybody, you're gonna, you know, we want you to have this job, you can start Monday. We want that Monday to be the day that they get their entry-level wage and not the sub wages anymore. So many people have been hired in different circumstances, in different situations, um, that there's no consistency to when they start getting their, their entry level wage. And if somebody has been asked to work in a position, having them be in that position for two weeks before the board meeting starts doesn't seem right that they're getting a sub wage. We feel they need to be getting their entry level wage um, so that they can they're considered an employee even though the board has not approved it because obviously if the board doesn't approve their hire, they're not going to be getting that entry level wage anyway because they would be getting the sub wage because they have to be approved by the, by the board before it can happen anyway. So we just want the hire date to be consistent. We need to have Everybody that's been asked to start on a Monday or a Wednesday and they say, yes, I'll be here, we want them to be able to get that wage, that entry-level wage, which then refers back to their seniority date, hire date, their, it's just all consistent because we seem to have a, um, just different, so like five different ones I can come up with on the top of my head on how people have been hired and paid and, you know, we just are trying to, to get some consistency so that everyone's on the same page. Um, and then as far as an hourly wage increase for our current employees, we're asking for a dollar this year and 50 cents next year. And then, um, do you want me to keep going there, well? On the back page, a couple things that we'd like to see changed is, um, as we sat and visited about our contract, we got to looking at the categories. And with the changes that are being made, the playground assistance and the coffee room coordinator, um, we just felt that they were in the wrong categories because food service and the playground or the copy room coordinator do not have as much hands-on contact with the students as the playground assistants and the teaching the paraprofessionals. So we would like those two classifications switched so that the teaching assistants and the playground assistants are more on the same page because most of our playground aides now are going into classrooms and working with students directly. Um, and so this gives them more of that hands-on, plus they're out on the playground with hundreds of students at one time. So um, we just kind of would like that switched around. We also felt that there was just way too much of a salary discrepancy in those Category 1 and that Category 2. Um, so we would like to see the Category 1 entry-level wage increased just to be more in line with what the other wages are. They work hard in the, in the kit in the cafeteria. You know, Sarah, she's been there 30 years probably, but um, if someone knew where to come in there, they would be overwhelmed with what Sarah does. I mean, to Sarah, it's second nature, but there's a lot involved in making all these little booklets and all the stuff that Sarah does. So uh, we just think that that needs to be better aligned. And then, 
Um, I'm going to hand these around. You guys just want to take one. If you can see in Category 6, we would like to um, add a computer lab tech assistant to our Category 6 position. As um, technology has become more prevalent in our world, our tech person has become overwhelmed with duties. This is a, what I've just handed out is like a job description that our current tech can come up with um, on what if we had an assistant his duties would be or her duties would be to help him. It would probably be a full-time position. But we also know that that can't happen if we don't have a category for him to go, him or her to go into. So we would just like to have that position added to category six so that the possibility exists for opening up that position. Um, in talking with, with Gary, um, pretty much the norm in the area, not for all the schools, but several of them, if you have 100 computers, you have one tech person. We're well over 100 computers. <laughs> and um, feel that this position is desperately in need of an assistant, just because of the addition of the Promethean boards, um, last year we got some iPads coming in, um, all of the new computers, the upkeep on all of that, all of the maintenance is um, very overwhelming for one person. And then this also allows the district to not rely on an outside source if something happens. If, if our tech is out, then hopefully the tech assistants would have the qualifications to be able to step in and, and manage the system. Uh, with with a great deal of confidence, given that. Um, also, we would like to see the base increased a quarter for each year. And you can see in the, in the per hour column the, the increase that that would be for the entry level to anyone coming into one of these new positions. And that's where we sit. But there's our proposal. <laughs> Like the caucus, or if you want to discuss it openly, whatever. Well, let's put our issue down on the table. Okay. We really only have one issue, and that's the fund benefits for health insurance mm -hmm. because of uh, you know, the Affordable Care Act and what it has done in terms of the requirement of the employer to make sure that the employees have health insurance on the government. <laughs> We realize that the language that currently exists in the contract is outdated. Right. And so we need to, you know, make some changes to that language to clean it up so that it, it more reflects with the practices that we're required to have to have. Um, I noticed in your proposal you guys have talked about, um, you know, the flex plan, talked about the health savings accounts and stuff. And I think that we're going to have to probably narrow in a little bit more specifically about how that actually needs to be explained to prospective employers or to, I mean, employees or employees who are here. Because um, there is that cash option advantage now that we do have. And that's not explained here. Right. With it being explained. I think it takes care of the health savings account side and it takes care of the flex side. So I, that's what we're interested in on our side, okay. is to clean that thing. So you can come back with a proposal to us on what you'd like it to say? Yes. Okay. Good. Because we, we, we see that with Dave, and I mean, we had debated this on how to present this, and this was our best option. <laughs> well, we can work with it. From here, we at least have an idea what it needs to well, I think that's, fire. that's the one thing that we want to do is we want to spend together. Right? Okay. And we definitely want to be working across the table for the language to be committed. Right. Because um, at this point in time, you know, there are caps on the flex. Right. And there are those problems that employees could have if they try to stick too much money into the flex. So. And which is why with the flex two we don't want to eliminate ten point two C because we have I know that Jody and there's like three or four others that 
they might put the max into the flex, but then they have that option to use the rest of the TSA. The well, so and, and that gets back into the cash crazy. option right. that needs to be explained. Which is, your cap, you're talking about the cash out, right? Will you guys pay the cash out? They, if, okay. they show, if they show that they have health insurance, mm -hmm. then at that point, they get the benefit in their, in a, in their check right. instead of as a benefit. So then they can use that money how they see fit. They can use it as pre tax. For example, if their spouse has a health savings account and he's got a family health savings account through his employer and he has set it up for his wife to be able to contribute, then the wife, if they have money, they can pre tax out of their check. Oh, you can? It's pre tax. Well, oh. it is pre tax. Oh, see, so now we it's thought tax. it was I thought it was tax. That's but I, but you let me see. I know. That's not for trouble. <laughs> um, no, I'm not sure if it can go from here to that health savings account. I know if it could go with it. For example, your spouse has a health savings account, you're an employee here, you can have yours pre tax go into that. Right. You know, we have a mechanism to allow for that. Um, not necessarily different. Well, see, now that's no, different right. because and yours, I believe yours is going to be taxed. If it's going to go in and then it's not going to be able to be pre tax dollars, so it's going to be taxed. And then so, why is that? Why is why because difference? We're, we're only set up with one health savings account provider through Fulton State Bank, our school district is. And that's for IRS, you know, management on our end so that we can manage our, our IRS. Higher as responsibilities for pre tax dollars. So, you know, if we have 100 employees out there with 100 different banks involved, with 100 different uh, health savings accounts going on, then it becomes a management nightmare for my clerk to try to manage all of them. And I would have to hire on another person just to take care of that end of right. the I mean, payroll that cycle. <coughs> so I have a question just to try and understand that you're saying that if an employee spouse has a health has health insurance that you're covered under and has a health savings account that the possibility of that employee putting that a lot from the from the district into that health savings account is a possibility, but it might be taxable income. It will be taxable income. Okay. They do not have the option, because their spouse already has a health savings account, of opening a health savings account of their own? Mm -hmm. They could, if, if they want to take our health insurance. But no, without taking our health insurance. Okay. Because see, what like what I do is, I have a health savings account with farmers, and I, you know, I put all the money the school gives me goes to my my uh, medical premium. But in addition to that, I can put whatever I want in this. I was thinking if this was rolled over to you, then just open up an account there. And, but she's got to have the insurance. I'd have to have the school's health insurance. Okay. So the so the main benefit to the way it looks like it's set up right now compared to what we were first talking about about losing this money is the fact that you won't lose the money it just that part of it will be taxable yeah. okay whereas the other side of the coin was you would lose the equipment. so you're getting it but you're paying taxes on it compared to not getting it at all and this was a concern that David had, and you guys might know this because I don't. He was concerned that if we did that, had the, the, the benefit paid out in the wage that was taxed, that they would be, we as employees would be taxed on it twice if we put it into a health savings account. And you guys know this. Well, yeah, there, there is the possibility. Because it's and going into the savings no, account, and no. you have that note. Here, here's how you get taxed on it twice is if you pull it out and use it. For a non-medical related issue, you don't replenish it back by the time you retire. Oh. Then there's a tax that kicks in on oh. top of that money there. Once you retire, then it's tax-free. 
that if you cash money out before that, you won't replenish it back into that account, then you're held accountable for retirement. That's but just on non-medical items. Correct. So if you're pulling that out for Medical. prescription, surgeries, okay. so the event would only be taxed on it once. But the, but the big issue there is you have to keep your records. Right. right. Exactly. You yeah. have to really keep well, your records of yeah. how you are managing your health savings because that's a whole IRS issue that I think yeah. can have when you got you home when you go to retire. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you if you take these benefits and you do them and, they, and, they, and you do them pre-tax, that lowers your reportable amount to Social Security in the long run. The amount that you re reporting as earned to Social Security then becomes less down down the road if you take those pre-tax benefits. If you take them pre-tax, so it's six and one half a dozen the other. If you're trying to build your amount in the Social Security account, as far as I'm concerned. I, I want my stuff to be all taxed because then I have more reported there later. But um, not doesn't you know everybody has to have their own tax advisor about what you need to do. But um, so it, they're going to get you one way or the other. That's for sure. There is social security. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly. exactly. <laughs> so we but, not so much. You, yeah. But because you know when you when you do the pre-tax thing, your 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 reportable wages, tips and wages, it's different. Right. Anyway. And then when you get your reports from Social Security down the road of how much your earnings were, right. it's reflected in there. So you know the thing about that it's tough they, enough for you to keep track of them. <laughs> they get you one they get you on both they get you one way or the other. Whichever you do, there's no real they're just encouraging you to save by making you think you're saving money now. So right. Then put the employee at a problem that 
here the school district is giving a benefit of 4200 but I'm only allowed to put a cap up to 2500 So now I'm losing this money. What do I do? How do I not lose that? And that's where the school district last year started providing the option of health savings account which said, okay, there's a high deductible insurance option you could participate in and then you could stick money in a health savings account and that health savings account can be treated very much like the flex as you've always done in the past. Um, so there has already been some movement afoot by federal regulations that have already started to trickle in and kick in. But the main boost is coming next year, 2015. So yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah. Well, I think we. We want to provide, if we're going to provide health care at all, we want, we want to make it affordable for the people, do the best we can for them. And so, like, if our health insurance premium is running at 340 or 375 a month, and you have these exchanges that offer the exact, exact same benefit at 300 a month, you're going to want to put pressure on your insurance carrier to get down to that level to say, okay, why aren't we able to get that kind of benefit for our, our employees? And so there's going to be that kind of stuff that's going to have to start happening to, to try to manage our health insurance. <coughs> insurance carriers have always really been in that CAFR and sort of driving things. Now it looks like it's going to be the employers that are going to have more are going to have to demand to have more control and have more options to shop. It's not a bad thing. I mean, it, and it will behoove us to manage our side of it, trying to get the best rates and policy for everybody. But it, I think it behooves everybody who's a participant in the plan to um, treat the plan honestly and fairly, too. Um, and to and to not just let your doctor's office bill whatever they want. You need to look at what they're billing. You need to be sure they're billing it right. You need to be sure they're getting paid right. You need to be sure they're charging right. And you need to be sure they're charging you correctly. Because I, I've worked years in healthcare, and primary care doctor's office, part of the department that healthcare is so expensive, he needs one and a half to two people to manage his insurance billing just so he knows he gets paid and he gets paid right. And um, I worked in healthcare and, uh, when I lived on the East Coast and um, these some of these doctor's offices in Montana don't have a clue what they're doing. Could have been a side business, I could have started a business, but. <laughs> um, anyway, so everybody needs, it's like, you know, they talk all the time about Medicare recipients need to look at find out if they really got the services that Medicare was billed for. So it behooves everybody who's part of the policy to be sure that, you know, that, that, that the insurance company is being treated fairly. Um, and the itemized list that they send you that shows you all that you got. That you really got. Way, that is mm -hmm. in layman's language. Mm -hmm. So that you don't have to call them 15,000 times to figure out what this was. Oh, that's a hypodermic needle. Oh, well, then say hypodermic needle. Or, you know, mm -hmm. especially with the elderly people. I mean, I yeah. they look at that, they don't know what half those, that terminology is. Well, and that's, how, and that's also how, you know, Medicare fraud is so rampant. Well, regular insurance fraud is rampant, too, mm -hmm. just because people don't understand what they got. So, back to <coughs> proposals. Okay, so, so we'll work on language there okay. for that side. Because okay. um, we needed to say whatever keeps us in the direct direction of the changing laws, right? Well, as much as you can, because they change daily, that's right. the problem. <laughs> I mean, you can't right. get too specific because yeah, then yeah. you're stuck to something that may be breaking the law in a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was, that was one thing that we did kind of expose yeah. a little bit this spring is you know, it depended on when you were looking at the information as to what had changed. Mm -hmm. And Blue Cross and Blue Shield had moved to the direction they weren't printing anything anymore because the rules and the interpretations were changing so rapidly that by the time they printed it, it'd be out. 
you know, we have that information not based on some. Um, they resorted to their uh, representatives doing all these workshops and explaining as much as possible. And there are a few of those opportunities for explanation as we learn a bunch. So moving down to um, the first day of July 2013, I don't see that. That just is when we disagree with the case that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, that's straightforward there. Mm -hmm. Seniority hire date is defined as first day of work in said position. Well, one of the things, one of the practices that we have had is that when a person was offered the position, they would go and they'd start working in that position until the board took an official hire. For example, let's say we had a playground um, person who, who quit. We would get subs in to do that position, and then all of a sudden we'd interview and hire that person week or two later, a board meeting would take, take effect and they'd say, okay, we're going to recommend you for hire and you keep the person on sub wages until the board took official action to hire. Now, on seniority, you, the seniority would start when the board took action. The question that you guys have is, you would like it the day that they start working in the set position. Right, the day that, because and this happened with one of the employees this fall, and I don't know if it was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, she was offered the position and said, yes, yeah, so I'll take that. And, 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 and then Monday she started in that position, but the board didn't meet for like two weeks. And so she had sub wages for two weeks when she thought she was getting employee wages. And um, so the seniority in that. And the compensation and are different because that's what I tried to refer back to was this. So it looks like you're trying to align the seniority with that yes, idea. Yes, exactly. So we, we want them to tie to, those two together yes, and talk about because it. when we because when I went back to um, and I'd have to look at the contract. So that's part Article Five, Point One. Because when I went back to what I was trying to tell uh, the district office, she she referred me back to Five Point One A, which was the salary schedule way to pay the first day of work as an employee of the district. And so what we wanted to say is after being offered and accepting the position, because if you, because you're not going to be an employee of the district until the board hires you anyway. So, but if she has been working for two weeks, we want her seniority to start that first day she started working. We want her entry level wage to start that first day. And then when the board says yes, she's hired, then it would be retroactive, I guess, that she would get those wages and her, and her hire, her seniority date would be the same. That was the word I was going to say, that we make it retroactive in some way to, well, to the board taking action. Yeah, the language proposed, I don't see how it works with the way it's proposed. Which would I be guess great the, if we can discuss it and get it right. <laughs> Because our intent, well, I our intent I was think, last time, I did think, not carry through. I think that's an important word, it is retroactive. Because I can see the, you know, the, the thought process saying, well, okay, you're saying that, you know, until the board officially says, yes, I approve this hire, okay, they, they formally become an employee of the district. We understand that. Um, so I'm thinking, yeah, they... It would either be that or don't offer them the job until the district has proved it. Right, and, and is that to our benefit? And that's not always to our benefit. Um, but it, the, the, the logistics would be, have, have has there been very many times that we haven't approved the recommendation for hire? Well, the reason I'm here is because somebody gave it approved. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't happen very often. But, so, but the thing yeah. is, how do you get that? What ends up happening here is the big thing that I believe needs to exist, and I like it at the board level, is there has to be a, de a defining point. And that defining point is the board does have that responsibility to do the hiring. And so, when they actually take that official action to hire, it's recorded in the minutes of that meeting, and it is. 
an actionable spot in time that defines when seniority starts and defines when the compensation should start. Which I understand that. Now, if, if we were to pull away from that point and say, okay, let us try to do something different where, you know, the administration is interviewing people, they're trying to get the positions lined out, they're trying to get the recommendation to the board, and in the meantime they find a quality person who is also probably interviewing down at Lolo, so want to secure them here, so we need to say, you know what, we're going to take you to the board, we're going to offer you the position, we're going to make the recommendation to the board. If that was to become the actionable point in time, then there would have to be something that we would have to hang our hat on, some kind of a document that would define that as the point in time. Because I can see it three years down the road, somebody's going to be talking about seniority and who has more of a seniority or not, and how do you dig that out, and how do you, how do you define that? Um, the minutes and meetings are great to do so. And when we get down to seniority, on the teachers' levels, um, it's very important because there is seniority clauses in there. Because seniority does drive who gets rifted and who doesn't. Who has that seniority? Well, see, and that's where we came into a lot of the problems when we had the whole issue with, mm -hmm. you know, um, the last time, is that's when we discovered a lot of discrepancies as to. The, the difference in this person's higher date and that person's higher date when we were trying to determine seniority for people, you know, when we had to have the layoff. Because that's where, that's where we just keep falling back and if there's no consistency. I mean, it's, even though maybe since you've been here, you've tried to do that, but, you know, myself, Carolyn, Gary, Kelly, you know, I, I can name a list of these people that we've all been hired different. Every one of us, there's not been consistency. We are all completely been different in the way we were hired. And so we're trying to get everything to be the same every time so that there's no question on somebody coming to me saying, well, I talked to the district office and they said I was going to become an employee Wednesday, but now I have to wait for another three weeks because that's when the board meeting is. I, I, we don't want that. We want everything to be the same. And we don't want them to think that for three weeks they're only making minimum wage when they could be making the entry level. And so that's where we're trying to, because if they have, they have committed themselves to being employed, we believe that they should be getting reimbursed for that. You know, I mean, they, instead of continuing to look for a job that's going right, to pay more. I was more. going to say they could still be out, you know, job hunting and stuff, and um, give up three, three, four weeks of job hunting because they've been offered that position to start on that particular. I, I know the gal that does the head of payroll in Brazilla County, and she said what they do is the starting date that they start that position, that said position, they pay that wage. And she said the board still has to approve it, but they're, we're on probation anyway, so the board, you know, they can decide not to hire them. They'll still get paid the, the starting mm -hmm. wage for three weeks, but then you might, because it's without cause. You're, no, we decided not to hire you, or you're let go. So, but it does, it prevents that, because it's like there's three, three people that are all hired in that two weeks and they're all approved at the board meeting, then they all have the same seniority. So that eliminates, does that, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, like what she said. Somebody started, started on Tuesday, somebody started right, on Thursday, right. somebody started on Friday. Yeah. The board meeting was the following Tuesday, yeah. they all have the same following Tuesday. Exactly. And she said, we're all on, you're all on probation, so it, you know, if they decide not to hire you, sorry, didn't work out. Yeah, this is if, they it. The so way, if they get the wage. They get the wage. Yeah. But so they, that's the wage. Seniority is based off the of board to cash. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's still, no, if, you're, if you were let go, then you're not, you know, you don't have seniority because you didn't make it through your probation anyway. Does, it, does that make but sense? But if they yeah. do, if so they their do, seniority. The seniority is based off of when the, they started. The starting date. Mm -hmm. So they're yeah, starting, they so started, they started, started on Tuesday. So and so started on Thursday. The gal that started on Tuesday has seniority if they're in the same category in the same position. So that's what she because I asked her. I'm like, oh, we don't know how to word this. What? So she said, this is what they do. So because she said, once even if somebody was subbing, they were getting the sub wage. But as soon as they start, they've accepted that position. They've been offered it. They've accepted it the day they start. 
So it doesn't matter what the actual is. The paper trail the, the day they punch the clock for that job is it permanent. Well, they don't get that option to punch until they've been hired by the board and they get their little card. Car. Car. Has yeah. it on a sub, mm -hmm. right? And so that's the. I mean, it's very confusing. <laughs> There's it a is. lot of steps it to is. the process, but we want it to be consistent every single time, and we don't can't keep saying. Well, this happened with so and so, and this. I mean, we don't. We want that to end. <laughs> we want for you guys too. I mean, yeah, it's, it's just better. better. Yeah. Because it hasn't, like Rita said, it hasn't been consistent. It hasn't been that we want to change it to the way we're saying it now, and it's always been the other way. Because it hasn't. It's got, it's flipped back and forth between employees, and that's that's the main issue. Is getting it so that everybody has the same thing, you know, the same guidelines. And well, that would really be any potential hard feelings. Well, had that really, well, it it really caused an issue during the, the board, run -off. The board would have to see that the contract, that they're approving the conditions of employment, that they're approving the person, is posted back retroactively to a date. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And should that be suited? I mean, I, I want this to be mm -hmm. so both sides can look at it and we don't have what happened this fall, you know, so that I'm not being. I'm under seniority, but it's supposed to be under compensation, and then I, it's not right. The way we had talked about it the last time we negotiated, you know what I'm saying? I want, want it. Well, I think we need to get that. <laughs> I need, think so, we need to get that retroactive in there because then, in the event that the uh, let's see if we put retroactive in there. But if we read gonna, into the motion. If we read into the motion, I make a motion to hire so and so for whatever job, we could put their effective date there, right? Mm -hmm. Could we read that into the motion? Effective. January. Whenever they started. Whenever mm -hmm. they started. Then that becomes then that becomes your documentable point. It does. Mm -hmm. And that's still, you know, because obviously everybody knows that they don't have a permanent job here right. until the board has a vote. Mm -hmm. So then we could say what their date is that just means it has to go into the into the board packet for the for the for the motion does that seem logical now it does <clears throat> that the fact that you got you paid them anyway from this particular first day they worked oh. and i don't mean them as a sub because if they've come in and you know been a sub for us for two weeks or three weeks and then the position becomes open and then they put in for interview and get the, the position offered to them. I'm not saying go back while they were subbing. I'm saying from the day that uh, say John yeah, said, yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. offer you this mm -hmm. job, yeah. would you like it? Yeah. And then that day after that that has happened, but then we say that in this room now, how do we clarify that in this language? Because you might be gone, you might be, I might, all of us might not be here the next time this happens. We've got, we we've got a contract language that yeah. agrees to that. So I think, in principle, we've got a tentative agreement to change that language, but we don't have the language to yeah. define it. I mean, so, you're understanding what we're saying. So, 8.1, well, 8.1, 5. Point one a. Do we each want to come up with some language that we bring back to the next meeting? Is that what we? Well. Are you guys going to need to talk to you your? Think, you know, I, if it's different. okay, if it's okay with you, I would like if you would allow me on this side to work with Reva on that side, and two of us to hammer out oh, really good. Bring you guys, it back yeah. together. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Don't that's have perfect. To, Banter back and forth. Perfect. Let's do that. You know, okay. Can we do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would that be okay with you? Oh, sure. Okay. So we'll get together and work on that language. Okay. Okay.
Okay, so 8.2 reduction in force. Okay, any laid off employee will have the option to receive their lump sum payment equal to one fourth of the accumulated sick leave or in their accumulated sick leave for up to one year case of recall. If laid off employee is not recalled after one year from the time of layoff, they would receive a lump sum payment equal to one fourth of the pay attributed to the accumulated sick leave. But then we get down to 8.3 of the recall paragraph, or the last, second to last paragraph, and it says, any accumulated benefit to which the employee is entitled will be restored to him or her upon recall to the district. Right. The I, my worry on that okay. language there and this language here is I can kind of put them together. I, I don't want somebody who, there has to be something that makes it very definitive that if you get cashed out, Mm -hmm. You don't get that back. Right, exactly. And I think that that explains that in our sick leave. If you um, look under our sick leave contract, it clearly states that um, on, what is it? And that's have our old contract to notice. I don't have that. It's 11.2 and it's 6 on page 11. An employee who receives a lump sum payment pursuant to this section and who is again employed by the district shall not be credited with any sick leave for which the employee had been previously compensated. So, so to me, and maybe not, because this is in recall, maybe that wording needs to be changed somewhere too, but to me, this this sick leave number six is saying, if you opted to take that sick leave pay, you're not going to get it back because it's, um, you cannot be compensated for any of it because you've already been compensated. Okay. And maybe not, I mean, I don't, that's, maybe that's where you guys need to discuss it and see if it covers that. Because I, for me, the part of keeping um, the, the, uh, any accrued benefits to the employee will be restored is their seniority and is, you know, those types of things that um, may be overlooked if they have been told that they were risked and then they come back and in the recall position, which might be in the middle of the school year, you know, and then they still will retain like, their seniority and stuff. Well, this, this language here is written as not a problem. We're going to pay that out at that rating. That's a right, that's right. a state law. Right. So I mean, it's it's not something that you know we can get around as an employer. Um, the only thing that we're doing is we're leaving a tie to that ripped employee in place, which we already have anyway. Is there any problem with delaying the uh, obligation into a new school year, for example, of of uh, being able to close up? You know, it, it becomes it becomes a potential debt that we are, that we have an obligation for. And is there a problem to rolling that into a future school year, accounting wise? We need to check on that, maybe. And that's probably a point that needs to be looked at as to whether or not you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, on the surface, this seems like it's a doable thing, but you know, because ours is carrying, right over. carrying the liability forward. Yeah. Carrying the, the liability for payout forward from one budget year to the next mm -hmm. could be problematic accounting. Of uh, somebody who's been riffed. I mean, because we're doing it for everybody. For sick leave, but I guess mm -hmm. for vac vacation. We had that one employee a couple, four years ago, who started in March or April, so she was not eligible to get her, sick, her excuse me, vacation leave paid out when the school went out because she had not been here six months. Mm -hmm. And so that had to be carried over, and she got paid off the yeah, next school year. And I don't know if that's the but same. But she worked into the next school year. Well, she did, but and see, yeah, and so you're right. it's no, an actual did. item up in that year. Yeah, you're and right. So the accounting yeah. issue that we have is if the action that is taken to RIF happens within one budget year, right. and you're carrying that liability forward to another budget year, is it allowable to be done that way? And our auditors might have something to say about it. I was going to say, I mean, I think in theory we 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 agree with the idea. We just need to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. No, we think sure. we just need to be sure yeah. that that's a, a legal thing sure. that we can because because it would be you know the employees willing to wait for their twenty five percent of their sick yeah. time for a year to see if they get called back. Right. Mm -hmm. 
so that so that they don't lose so much of it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But then the question becomes: Is can we roll that item from budget to budget? What do you think, Mel? Mm -hmm. Whole lot easier to run a small school. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. Just, yeah. Because it does stink if you're, you know, say me I have like 300 hours of sick leave and then I get paid a quarter and then I get my job back and I, I lose all that. See, to me it's easy. I can say this stuff at the table, mm -hmm. but it's just more than that. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. you know, well, and Donna in some respect too in the sense mm -hmm. that she has to keep track of it. But I mean, it's just we're trying to... Yeah, and, uh, and I agree know. with it. I mean, it, it makes sense because then when the employee comes back, I, I understand the situation mm -hmm. that was there in it. It was a tough situation, right. but sometimes that's life. Right. So right. I mean, we'll take a look at it. It's not doable. It's not doable. It's not legal. It's not legal. Mm -hmm. Right. Eight point three. And this we're just clarifying mostly, and I don't know if that if there was an issue when one employee was recalled, but. I think by clarifying that they get their wage, their previous wage back, unless we've negotiated an increase, that they get that as well. I mean, I just want to clarify so, so that it's not, oh, they were rich, but now they're going to come back at entry level. We don't want that. Previous previous wages, I understand. Mm -hmm. um, but it increases, and I guess the thing that has to kind of be, because they would come back to previous level. But the, but when you get a negotiation, let's say a year of experience gives you an added twenty five cent an hour increase. Mm -hmm. If that person didn't work and didn't get that year of experience, should they be entitled to that increase? Because the increases, I know on the teacher side, experience matters. Right. And so that's the question on your side. Well. I guess I'm looking at it too in the sense that they were they were able to come back when they were recalled within that year time frame. So that mm -hmm. says that they they are still being a loyal employee. They already know the position, so you don't have to spend time training them because they're going to come back in with that knowledge. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to lose. Are they going to lose that much in a year? So to if they're me, year? it's a benefit to not have to train somebody. Um, to come in at the end, they know for the most part all of the students, with the exception of maybe some new students that came in. You know, so you're going to encounter, to me, the benefit of having that knowledge of that that it past employee. Because yeah, it might be three or four months down the road that they get they get recalled, but I believe that they're worth hiring back if they have that information and that knowledge and that experience. Mm -hmm. When they can walk right into the position because they were just there, give or take. And if a new person came in and was making more or the same, it would be, I don't know. Well, you we figure if this person has got some good reviews, they're a good employee, and they're a good employee, and they've, you know, been here and whatever, then, yeah, I can definitely see the benefit in not having to, to you know, you know, to train a new employee and get them on board with, with all the you know, policies and stuff. Well, what do you think? Yeah, I hate to be splitting hairs, but it's not like, it's not like any wage increases a very big amount. It's not. And, uh, yeah, if it's within a year, they're not going to yeah, they would lose a little experience, but they could be that much. No. And, uh, and if you had to retrain somebody, there was a cost there. Well, sure. Train somebody new. Yeah. Train somebody new if that person. So, would yeah, if, uh, if, if they hadn't found something else within a year and they were willing to come back, and it just so happened that there had been an uh, increase in benefits. And you guys are feeling that that's a fair thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've had to train people. <laughs> and I do believe it's a fair thing to bring somebody in and how's what they're doing. <laughs> so I think uh, 
or an agreement on the language for eight point three. Yeah, point three. Yeah. Point three. And also on the back page, just eliminating that one sentence that was in yeah, a huge chunk of it. Yeah. Okay. And then 10.0. Let's table this if we can. Sure. Because we, we've got a lot of work to do. Yep, I agree with that. And so okay. if we could just table that until we have a chance to really dig into that. We just found the 11.1. Mm -hmm. That's adding these days. New Year's Eve Day, Thanksgiving after Thanksgiving Day, Christmas Eve Day, Destruction Day. Correct. Could you give us a minute to caucus on this one? Sure, absolutely. And we'll stay here. Okay. okay. Close the plastic ones, the door will be too hot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you say you wanted us to close the door? No, they will. Um, can I just say that I see this in lieu of a raise? How much? What's the money here? There's money there. There's money there. What's the money here? There, there's money there. And That's why I'm saying. Yeah. Um, the reason why I wanted to caucus on this here. It's worth quite a bit of money. It's it's it, 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 I don't like these types of things because they get expensive real quick. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we can. No, you know, I don't think we can do both. No. We're going to have to do one or the other. But maybe that's maybe that's a negotiating point. Well. On the other side, if you take a look at their compensation stuff, um, you know, they're talking a dollar an hour, and 50 cents an hour. They're not there. You know. And then they're they're wanting to make a change to the category here, which probably is well deserved and necessary, but. Um, they would jump that category and then add this, right? Plus this? Well, what they do is they go to the base, the base categories. Mm -hmm. They jump one up to 75 cents and the rest of them to 25. So they jump in the starting category rates, mm -hmm. which doesn't, really affect, doesn't anybody. affect anybody really. Right. I mean, okay. Unless we have a new hire, that's the effect. Okay. So it'll have an over, and actually, in the category increases, you kind of want to keep those up a little bit above minimum wage so you have better recruitment mm -hmm. of people coming in to right. work for you. Right. Um, but then on Article 5.1 or 5.1b, that's where the tire hits the roll. Mm -hmm. That's where every employee is getting their wage increase. Mm -hmm. That's where it gets expensive. So everybody. Theoretically, everybody's getting six or eight dollars a day increase. So, I, I, I'm not sure that we could. I don't, you know, and then you add, and then you add four paid just days. Pin that out. Just pin that out, just as you said it, like a dollar, and you say, okay, let's average it out at about six a day times thirty. Mm -hmm. Times 180. Mm -hmm. So, 180 times 180. And 6 is 18. So that's $100 a day. $180 a day times 180 days, right? Mm -hmm. Does that seem about the math?
some of these people that work here around here. They live there, right? Yeah, we have janitors that work here around here. Mm -hmm. That likes. Yeah. The Why? computer man? He works here. Gary does. This this adding a computer tech assistant. Well, I I, I don't want to put that. I don't want to put that in the contract right now because we've got the library media person coming on that's taking it. Then it helps. The then it job description is mm -hmm. going to have a lot of that. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to blend the two at this point. Right. So, but just by putting it in there that 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 if if we had that position it would fit there. Are we better off to not put that in at all, or are we? I think we're better off not to put it in to not until put it in. we're ready. Until we're ready, mm -hmm. then we can, you know, decide where it goes and that's okay. Mm -hmm. So, because I would, I'd love to get. We're not prepared to talk about that. Mm -mm. No, so I think that's something. To yeah, but getting back to this holiday thing, I, I think we just have to. We got we got to put a pencil number to that. And because if you know, uh, I don't see how we can do both. There's no no way. Good way. But again, that might be their strategy. Still, we just gotta. Well, I know that they have talked about this. What they get upset with is up here in these holidays. Most of the employees don't get to take advantage of independence. Mm -hmm. the janitors do. Mm -hmm. And so they see the janitors getting out of the janitor working at that time of year. So the rest of the employees are off. Mm -hmm. So they don't get access to that holiday. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, well, there's these number of holidays that the state allows us for, and they don't get access to them all. It's paid a holiday. We can offer one or two days and not full. We still could go here, but maybe we offer them something to, to get them to. Well, you'd be saying, okay, it's compensation package. This is part of the compensation. Mm -hmm. It's tough to separate the two options and put that back. Mm -hmm. Again, you don't want to start off with, you know, we're, we're agreeing to you get this, and we're going to take this amount of coffee to give you this. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of yeah. But I guess, I guess I, I'd love to know what the number of that four days is, so because that puts it in more perspective for, you know, when we're talking about the budget. That's, that's 30. It's 30. 30 people again? Is that what you're saying? That's what mm -hmm. Roughly. Well, again, I don't know how to do that, but say, say... Roughly one, two, three, four days of pay. So, 30. So, 30... The daily rate would be... So, say, say the daily rate was an average of $10 times 30 times 4. 
right? So 60 times 30 times 4. So it would be $1,800 at, at $1,800 per vacation day, plus the associated taxes and all that stuff with that. FICA withholdings and our contribution to FICA withholdings. And, Yeah, yeah, approximately. So this, this is, deal here cost eight, the other one will cost quite a bit more. Than two. Uh, yeah. Let's table this and we'll come back with some round covers to them. Yeah, that, that would be logical, wouldn't it? Just that one item. Well, what about 5.1? Well, I just don't. I mean, we're going to ask the caucus on that anyway, but it's a nice one. Well, 30 cents an hour is about 3%. Mm -hmm. Teacher vertical, 2.5%. But I also will say, this employee here is the kind of person who lives in our community. Sure. And do they have a little bit of wage? It's very debatable. Sure. So you know, we look at it from the standpoint of you ask them to do a lot of things that you know, kicking and screaming kids up and put them in the energy. I wouldn't do it for what we pay them. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it is a unique job in a lot of respects. Mm -hmm. So you know, where you draw the line? It's mm -hmm. the sky to that. That's a good discussion to have. This, this is what they're making now, is there are deals mm -hmm. on the back side. So when you get, when you get in there, you're, you know, Beginning food service assistant is at six to eight sixty five an hour. But if you have somebody who's worked in there a couple of years, they can easily be up over ten an hour because well, of all these. Because and they want to add twenty five cent increase to to the entry level in base per but, category in year two. But if you look at it, if somebody started off at eight sixty five an hour and they worked for a couple of years and then those couple of years they had a 50 cent an hour here and a dollar here, they're at about 50 more than that base rate. Mm -hmm. Which is, uh, you know. And then, you know, you can go another buck here. You start getting into this, they've generated some real big wages fairly quick. And that's why you gotta be very careful on my, I don't necessarily agree with them. A couple years back, um, I think it was 2009, we did, we took a big step where we did, I believe it was a dollar, a dollar, 25 an hour, which really moved the wages forward. And thank God we did because we then also saw at that time, I mean, the wage took a big jump. And so we, we kind of kept ourselves, of course, we put a cart. Mm -hmm. But right now, today, I could go out and I can do wage comparisons of other employees up and down the valley, and I will assure you, we're not way out of whack. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we're not. We're sitting pretty good when it comes to our treatment at this level of employee. Well, all of our employees are treated very well. Mm -hmm. and there, isn't, there isn't any level of employee that could say that they're mistreated. Well, the, well, I mean, the, you know, they might get better wages if they spent the gas to drive to Missoula, but that's, you know, that's a, well, that's an expense, you know. Well, and I, 
we were talking about that fifth grade teacher, and I said, well, it's the fifth grade teacher command or first year, first year teacher command, and you said 32,000. Just that morning I read in the paper in Zula, it was 32,000 there. Right there. We're right there. We're there. Mm -hmm. And I think, and that's one thing that, We need to realize that we have we have taken care of our employees in the past, and we'll probably continue to do so in the future. But at this point, I can tell you right now, I don't have an offer to give. And, and, and we got to have in consideration because they don't have to drive them as well. A good number of them right here. They appreciate a pretty good little job right here. Within five miles of it. So, I would tell you right now, you can't go above 50 cents an hour. Do we want to give them a number tonight, or do we want to tell them we want to take that up at the next one? Well, I think take it up at the next one. Mm -hmm. We'll just sit down and we'll get this hammered out and make sure we're correct on the point. Because we got a lot done tonight already. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, we have a budget and finance committee tomorrow night. So, you want to bring them in and just let them know what we need to study this and... Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let them know we got a cave. Come forward to cave. You ready? Yeah. yeah, well, it's always moved in, guys, so... Oh, oh, I don't know if you do that back for a moment, so... Okay, we were talking about this uh, 11.1, and it does have some school district and so what we need to do is we need to go back and study what that actual cost is going to be. We need to flesh it out so the number. Uh, so we'd like to table that out and then it also as we move down through here we we'll look at you know, the duration of the agreement we don't see a problem there but when we get down to compensation that's another thing we want to flesh out. So we think that as of tonight we've accomplished quite a bit but we can get done if that's okay, and then we can come back and pick up where we left off here and here, and then recap these other issues that we talked about earlier. And you don't want to touch base on just changing these categories around? You want to wait to do that then? We'll wait to do okay. that. Okay. All right. That's so, okay with you. I'm sure. It's okay with that. I mean, I don't see why it's not. So give us a couple weeks on the be out of town. So okay. uh, I will get you my schedule. I expect to be back. Okay. I'll be out of town for a few days. Okay. Um, so like next week, not and happening. If you can give me your guys' a schedule, we'll try to pick a date. And so you're out there to prison, aren't you? Aren't you going to prison? In the month or something? Um, just for like three or four days. Yeah. You're not done yet in July? Just long stuff. Oh. Okay, so um, I'll be in touch with you because we need to work on that. So I say the homework is you guys are going to do language and then we're going to flesh out the, the dollar amounts and these other portions. That's mm -hmm. the homework. And then after we get that, we'll uh, I'll call you and we'll touch okay. 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 Thank you for coming in so organized and uh, appreciate it. It was a good discussion. Yeah, okay. Great discussion. As far as uh, 10 point all though, we'll see if we can send them <laughs> all. Maybe we'll do such a good job, they will take that to Yeah. Sorry again for being late.
She calls me at work. I get ready to walk out the door. I got like 15 minutes. I'm walking out the door. I did actually forget because we have a budget and finance tomorrow night, and then we have a board board to see. I know who you are. This one on the calendar. And then we're having. Do we have a date yet for the policy review thing? With no. Okay. See, I haven't missed that one yet. It's the end of the month, so okay. I'm looking at my schedule trying to make sure we can get that. Okay. See, I didn't miss that. We talked we talk about it last week of the month. Okay. All right. Okay, guys, thank you so much.